false witness, my friends. We have an active persecutor of Christians and the Christian churches. His name is Mohammed Shafiq, or at least that's the name he's going by today. He very often has different disguises, beards, funny glasses. The name has changed three or four times, but his message is always the same. He is a manipulative liar who controls all discussions by never answering any questions that are brought to him in various interviews. And although he gets quite a bit of time on RT and other television shows because of the drama and the arguing that goes back and forth, um, they believe provides a stimulating discussion, I find it highly offensive that they never seem to make him be quiet enough for the other person to respond with an entire um, sentence. He controls the discussion by never answering one single question. He always deflects it with something which is completely unrelated and tries to spin and propel the conversation off into a hundred other tangents in widely different areas than anything that was previously asked of both of the interview participants. It is obvious that he is completely, absolutely, literally, getting off on misdirecting um, the conversation, not being able to support any position, making simple reams of inflammatory comments, and his only supporting position is the sole fact of, of division, to cause upsetment, to cause grief, to mock and ridicule his opponents in interviews. And I tell you all people, beware. Because the king of deception is the devil, and he is the chief of liars. And we all know that Islam is not a religion, but a dictation of hate, which says lies, uses lies, and instructs its followers to use lies or whatever you can to rape out the population. And this means destroy the people of every country literally by breeding them out through rape on the persons of the country of any area. To be a guest or refugee of any nation is merely a Trojan horse and lie of Muhammad teaching that by whatever avenue you take in order to conquer your enemies, Solely, your enemies are any person that disagrees with you. So in the rape and pillaging of a country, in using up all of the resources of an area, in destroying and dividing a people, this all is your victory and gives you the right to plunder and take anything that you can from any area. And if anyone is allowing you in as a guest, um, that's simply their misunderstanding. You have merely used the gift or Trojan horse of accepting their hospitality as a means to conquer and overthrow a people. They don't see it as being a guest. Now, anyone who would say differently about the Islam teachings, again, not a religion or faith, is either a complete liar, which Mohammed utterly purports to use any and all means, and especially teaches and dictates lying to get into that position. Now, he, this gentleman gets away with this because he thinks that anyone who's not of an Arabic nation and Arabic speaking doesn't have access or can't read a Quran. The people who say that it's not lies and that it is a religion or faith are either a lying as Muhammad tells them to do or b are some sort of sympathetic you know cry on your shoulder let's accept the beatings that we're responsible for everything kind of person who just hasn't delved into the dictates or become ingrained deep enough to realize 
was actually at the center of these teachings. Allah hates, never says anything of love, is simply based on pure hate. It is not a religion, and it does not teach or purport peace in any manner whatsoever. The teachings of Allah preach hatred to kill all Jews and all Christians. Be victorious through the use of terror, is a direct quote of Muhammad. It is a domination, a satanic ambition, and a kingdom of darkness. The evil teachings of Islam, kind of the worst ones to our list here, there are many. The first one, it is a demented paradise of depraved and sexual perversity. Teaching in Quran 9, verse 111. Your passport to paradise is fulfilled by the slaying or be slain, to kill or be killed, all for God. It is incessant copulation with 72 virgins or whores, and it specifically quotes, with voluptuous breasts and eyes lustrous. Does this sound like anything a God would teach? For a people to do, make sure they have voluptuous breasts and lustrous eyes. That's why they are now recently insisting on the hijab and other clothing to cover the woman. If you look at photos of the university in 1972 of basically all the universities in the Arabic areas, but specifically um, there's one that I see a picture of in Afghanistan. And the women are all wearing typical 1972 everywhere in the world fashion. Mini skirts, large belts, accessories, matching purses, clumpy high heels, cute high hairstyles, makeup, Peter Pan collars and, and buttoned down slightly. It's only recently that we have these burkas and burkinis and niqabs and, and other things which um, this gentleman says is fashion. Let's come to Quran teaching number two, most evil. And we have in Quran 9 verse 5, Slay the idolaters wherever you find them, even in their own countries. For them... After the sacred months is past, kill them and prepare them for the eating. We're talking about the teaching of cannibalism, my friend. Kill your enemy and then serve him up in a dinner to celebrate that you have conquered and killed them. If they repent, which is after torture, and they agree to pay the due or tax, all is forgiven. They must either convert and pay the tax or be killed. Islam teaching number three, Quran 9, verse 29, extort from all of those who believe in the scripture or the peoples of the book. We're talking anyone who is a Jew or a Christian automatically gives an Islam person a reason to extort any money any belongings, any women, any family members that you see fit to do anything you desire with, for they are the plunders of your conquering their nation. If they invite you in, congratulations, you've conquered them, you're entitled to plunder whatever it is you want to take. Extort from those who believe in the scripture or the people of the book until they are defeated, humiliated, and pay the tax. This is a call for mass murder and extermination, which is worse than that of Hitler. Quran teaching number four. Quran 5, verses 32 and 33. Let them be killed and be crucified through their hands. Cut off their hands and feet on alternate sides and then expel them out of the land. For now these lands are yours. 
Quran teaching number five. Quran 65 verse four teaches pedophilia and speaks of girls before they have had their period. Continue to have sex with them until they have birth or for a period of three months. It is okay to have sex before they are old enough to have periods. Muhammad, when he was 50 years old, took to wife for himself. This was not wife. This was incest and pedophilia. Took to wife to himself his six-year-old niece, Alicia. 50 years old, a disgusting old man, takes a six-year-old six girl, Alicia, his niece, to marry. Pedophilia and incest. Quran teaching number six sanctions the unrestrained slavery and weight rape of all women, your own people and those come from your conquered area. Quran 33 verse 50, Allah has given you as power the daughters of your aunts and your uncles. Quran teaching number seven, Allah is forgiving and merciful for this is the rape and raid of infidels community and the rape or possession of the right hand, which means put them into slavery. As many wives as you want, a minimum of four for an ordinary man, for leaders or powers of war to take 44 wives apiece. Again, the breeding out of the nation for which they are being hosted of or conquered, same thing in the eyes of Islam. Quran 4 verse 34, beat your wife, sanctioning if you are in fear of, the desert, of their desertion, first put them alone in a sleeping place. So they're going to be deprived socially, have no sex with them, and then beat them. This is your religious obligation. Islam law says it is okay to strike your wife and to beat your wife if she doesn't make herself beautiful for you, if she does not satisfy her husband sexually, if she tries to leave the house without you. Islam teaching number eight. Quran 8 verse 44, 41. Allah says that you must give 20% of all your booty of war, women, slaves, belongings, money, whatever it is you take, you give to your imam or your local Islam preacher 20%. Evil Quran teaching number nine, Quran 24 verse two. Adultery in all of its forms flog the offenders, both of them, 100 stripes in public. Show no mercy, beat them in public. Now, sex slaves, slaves of the foreign people or the people whose nation or area you occupy don't fall into this. Under this situation, the man is not striped in public only if he is an Arabic man taking a woman from another Arabic man. If it is a non-Arabic, non-Islamic person that you take, the man is not punished in any way or form. It is his booty that he is entitled to. And as long as he gives two in 10 women to the local imam to rape, um, then that is the dictates of what are not only there's allowed to do, but what they're supposed to do, what they're dictated and taught to do. And oftentimes, as these women are given to their local imam, they actually literally, in many of the Arabic countries, have sex slave markets. And the women are paraded up and down the street in trucks with cages on the back so that the local men can see what's coming to auction that day and they will trade or give to the imams or sell for money um, repeatedly all the women that they are tired of, that they are 
done raping. Any Muslim man who abuses a sex slave or rapes or beats a woman that he has taken is not punished as that is his God-given concubine, property, booty, slave of war. Evil Quran teaching number 10 teaches the torture and enslavement and beheading of all infidels, of anyone in an area that you enter who does not immediately convert under torture and pay additional taxes. In the Quran, there are 3,990 evil, more depravity teachings taught. They contain no moral teachings whatsoever. In 75 specific instances in the Quran, it repeatedly dictates and demands the beheading of anyone who is not an Islam person in any area into which you enter, conquering, guest, or otherwise, the area immediately belongs to you if you are allowed to reside there. We come to Quran 22, verses 19 to 22. Slay all the pagans. Take boiling water and pour it over their heads until their bowels melt. Quran 5, verse 38. Cut off their hands and their feet on alternating sides. Verse 39. Convert them to Islam. Quran 8, verse 12. The heads are to be cut off. They are not to be spared. So, we say to Muhammad Shafiq and every other proponent of Islam, you are not a religion. You do not teach a way or manner of worshiping God. That's what religion means. Religion means each person has a private and individual right in how they worship God. Muhammad was a man. Allah represents Satan, and the very worship of the crescent moon is a mockery of God because God, the symbol of God and his benevolence to the earth and creating humanity is the sun. And as you know, the moon does not have its own light. It merely tries to cheat or steal or destroy a little bit of the reflection of the sun and pretend like it is God. And, and that's why Islam, the symbol of Islam, is the moon, or the crescent moon. The angel, Satan, came as a light which tried to deceive. And many false teachings will try to get as close as they can to God in the Bible. Nobody should ever be interpreting a foreign tongue teaching a speech, and then they come across the word Allah. Do not ever translate this into God. For this is a demon. It is not God. It is not a religion. It is not a way of practicing any religious beliefs. It is merely a dictation on how to lie by any means possible to be the Trojan course, to enter every country that you can, and to rape and breed out and pillage and steal everything you can as your entitled booty, your entitled war prizes under the teachings of an evil Muhammad prophet who is dead and suffering in hell right now for all of these crimes, for all of these teachings, and for raping his six-year-old niece. So don't be fooled. Beware. Draw close to the God, and he will draw close to you. And the Holy Spirit, when you ask Jesus into your heart and become a Christian or repent for your sins, he will speak to your heart and let you have discernment so that you can be prepared to know the truth about all these things. But don't focus on the evil lies. Focus on the good and staying close to God. They will take up all of your time and all of your energy trying to mislead you and take you down these various paths of oration which are complete evil and disgusting and manipulative lies. Focus on God and stay to God and concentrate on what's good and true and right and pure. Hold on to your crowns, my friends. Jesus is coming soon. Thank you so much. If you want to support us in our work, please contact us through buffalostudy at yahoo.com or send us a note at Twitter on Exposed Conspiracy. Thank you so much.
We also are available via PO Box 31, Big Bear Lake, California, 92315. Appreciate anyone that can lend support to this ministry and these issues. We have had not only threats, but actual literal attempts on our life for trying to expose what these people are going to do and are, are, and are doing right now in all nations. So thank you so much. And, and we appreciate your prayers and your notes that we have blessed or in any way informed your life. Thank you so much. Have a great day.